Okay, can you start by telling us a bit about your background? So your name, age, where you were born and your rank and role in the ACF, please, sir. Well, my name is Pat O'Mara in the cadets. I get called Sir and Colonel, but nobody salutes me in the high street, which is awful. <laughs> but um, I'm Colonel Cadets, which is basically a role where I look after, uh, I act as a sort of spokesperson for the commandants and CCF contingent commanders. But what I also do is I'm an advisor to the brigade on, on the Army Cadet Force and the Army section of the CCO. Um, in terms of my age, well, I joined the Army Cadet Force in 1977 as a cadet. So you can work out that I'm kind of the wrong side of 50. <laughs> um, so um, I, I'm, I'm, I live in East Kilbride, just outside Glasgow. I married a, a Glaswegian a number of years ago, uh, and the rest is history, because I, this is hard to believe that I'm not actually Scottish. I'm actually from London, so uh, the, uh, I'm a Londoner. That doesn't make me a bad person, but I've actually been in Scotland for well over 20 years, so, so I'm, I'm pretty much uh, part of the furniture, which hence, hence this hat and not a rifleman's hat, which is what I used to wear. We won't hold that against you, sir, that you're from London. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bad person. Um, cool. Can you tell us what's been your most rewarding role within the Army Cadet Force? Uh, the most rewarding one was probably the detachment commander. Um, in Easter House, which is in Glasgow. It's, it's quite a tough place. Uh, I was asked to set up a detachment um, probably about uh, 15 years ago, uh, maybe a bit longer than that. Uh, um, and uh, it was quite a hard place to work, actually, but the cadets were great, the, 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 the parents were great, the community was great. Uh, and it's still there, sort of 17 or 18 years later, which is, which is great. So that's quite an achievement. And, and I think it gave me some credibility with, with the Glasgow Manager Battalion, which I was in at the time. Cool. cool. Uh, so, onto a bit more of a kind of lighthearted one. What is your favourite joke? Well, favorite I've got joke? lots of favourite jokes, but I'm not sure cadets can hear them. <laughs> um, so, I'll probably just tell the one that my detachment commander, when I was a cadet, told me. He was a guy who told a lot of jokes. And he would ask you, well, he's still around, he's in his 80s. Um, and he tells my son the same jokes that he told me and says, Have you heard this before? So, what goes peck, peck, bang? I don't, know. I don't know. A chicken in a minefield. <laughs> okay, so it's a dad joke, but it's clean. <laughs> I like it. Oh, thanks for that, sir. I love just to be polite. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what do you find are the most difficult decisions to make? Well, generally, or within the cadets? Within the army cadets. Yeah. Within the cadets, um, probably every now and then I have to get involved with with discipline issues. It's very rare, actually, for adults to get involved with discipline. Uh, issues but it does happen sometimes people do something daft or something bad and i don't think people join the army cadets as a volunteer to end up going through a disciplinary process so that's probably the less enjoyable side of what i do but my job is not to discipline people my job is to give advice on, on, on how it should be done yeah uh and to our next question that there is do you sing in the shower and if you do what is your favorite song <laughs> You know, that's such a weird question. <laughs> Asking someone yeah. to do in the shower. Um, no, I don't sing in the shower, and I suspect if people do, they're weird. <laughs> so I don't have a favourite song for the shower because I don't sing in the shower. So how about that? Um, yeah. Okay. This is water, by the way. Honestly, it is. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, okay, sir. Would you describe yourself as having any weaknesses? And if so, what are they? Now, this can be weaknesses in everyday life. It doesn't just need to be in cadets. Uh, my weakness is gin. Um, so I do like gin, but so this is not gin, this is water. That's a really hard question, weaknesses. Um, I can sometimes be short-tempered, surprisingly, because I'm very well known in my day job uh, for being Mr. Calm in a crisis. Uh, but but um, I can sometimes just get irritated by small things. So that's probably a weakness. Mm. I think as a leader, you shouldn't... You shouldn't um, you shouldn't have, well, everyone has a weakness, it's a daft thing to say, but I think the leader should probably lead by example, mm -hmm. includes not being short-tempered. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that's probably it. That's probably and it. are you a paramedic, sir? I am. I'm a, I call myself a rusty paramedic uh, because um, I actually became a paramedic way back in 1992 uh, when they first started, although I was in the ambulance service before that. Um, so in my day job, I'm a senior manager with the Scottish Ambulance Service. Um, and... Um, 
uh, uh, currently, I, well, I've been working on, on our arrangements for the climate change conference that was supposed to be coming to Glasgow in November. So I was leading a team of people preparing for that, which is going to be, when it does come, and it's going to be next year sometime now, uh, um, the biggest event in our history. Wow. Uh, so, so I was doing that, but I'm involved with, with the COVID activity at the moment. Uh, and um, uh, up until a couple of weeks back, I was helping kick off some work with the build of the NHS Louisa Jordan Hospital, which is the new site wow. in Glasgow that we hope will never get used. Um, went operational today, so there you go. That's amazing, sir. Thank you very much for everything that you're doing in your day job. Uh, well, I'm very lucky because I'm doing a job I still enjoy after 35 years, and I'm also um, getting paid and I'm at work, which I know a lot of people are in a bad place. So I'm very fortunate, and that's what I do. I'm not a hero by any stretch. And when people call me a hero, it's quite weird. And I went outside the house on Thursday evening because people were clapping. <laughs> and across the road shouted we're doing this for you Pat <laughs> uh, and I was mortified uh, I was embarrassed because we just do what we're trained to do so there you did are. they have their pots and pans out sir were they banging uh, well someone did down the road yes <laughs> yes indeed but it's very nice it's very nice I shouldn't be ungrateful <laughs> so where where do you see yourself in two years so in your day job where do you see yourself in two years also where do you see yourself um, in the army cadets in two years so my day job I'm actually going uh, towards the end of my career. So I can actually retire now if I wanted to, but I don't want to at the moment. So I'm not quite sure. Uh, um, I'll probably be doing a similar job to what I'm doing at the moment, uh, but who knows? I didn't know I'd be doing this job two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and the cadets, I finish as the Colonel Cadets next year, and that's because when you get to this level, uh, there's a time limit on how long you can, you can be in post. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming up to five years at the end of next year. So I'll look to do something after that. Not sure what yet. Um, it depends what's about. I'll either move sideways or, or, or I'll move down or I'll move out. I've, I've no idea yet. I, I think I've still got plenty to give to the cadets. So I'll probably do something, but I'm not sure what. It depends on what's available. If, if, if you did have a choice, where would you like to go? Oh, that's a really good question. I could come up to the Highlanders and sort you all out. <laughs> um, uh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not at all. You've got wonderful covenants up there, and I know them all. Um, you've got a new covenant, haven't you? We do, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. What's He's he brilliant. Like? Is he brilliant, is he? Brilliant. Okay, all right. Are you just saying that because you're being recorded? Not at all, sir. No. All right, okay, all right. <laughs> the, uh, the, the uh, Colonel Mike McDonald was in was our last interview. Um, right. was, was, was oh, our last week? It was our last one. Last, okay. last week, yeah, we interviewed him last week. Okay, yeah. how did that go? It was funny. It was funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah they've right. all been quite funny so far. Uh, so, so far? Oh, they've oh. all been, no, and, yeah. and this yeah. one too. <laughs> all right, okay, I'm just checking. All right, okay. I'm sorry, I haven't answered your question, but say it again, Star, because I, I've kind of went off on a track there. So it was, it was where do you see yourself in two years in your personal life and in the cadets? Right, okay. Oh, what would I like to do? Right, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've obviously got an interest in medicine. Um, which is pretty helpful if you're in the ambulance service, isn't it? Um, so, uh, um, you know, if something came up on the medical side, maybe I'd do that. You know, dream jobs, an MSO, medical support officer, go down and you can't look after her EDs. I'm well qualified for it. Yep. You know, I just don't know. Uh, maybe something medical, maybe something else. We'll, we'll yep. see. We'll see. And um, so, would you say you have any pet peeves or the things that irritate you? Oh, um, those, yeah. Or lo oh, loads. I thought you said no. <laughs> Loads and loads and loads of pet peeves, especially people who wear hats indoors. But um, <laughs> I'm only doing that because everybody I've seen on these things has been wearing a hat. But in all seriousness, um, probably I was going to say men that don't shave, but that would kind of mean that woman as well. But <laughs> that would be awful to say, wouldn't it? Okay, I, I don't have that problem, so I'm okay. Oh, 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 uh, um, uh, so I, I hate people who are unshaven. Now, people are growing a beard, that's fine, but if somebody just hasn't bothered shaving, that's a real pet peeve. Um, the other pet peeve, and I'm going to be seen on showing one day, aren't I? Uh, but the other thing I really detest is lateness. I just think tardiness is just the most awful thing. I think people who are tardy should be hung from a lamppost as a warning to others or something. Not that I have strong views, but I didn't mean that, by the way. <laughs> the, the latter bit, I did say uh, about the tardiness, I hate it, but I didn't mean about hanging people. That would be Just as well, we're all taught to be five minutes early, sir. Just as well, nobody's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's probably two pet peeves. There that's you go. Cool. Uh, so what do you like to do in your spare time? Oh. When you're not drinking what? gin. Oh. Yeah. 
it's not gin. <laughs> not honestly. Um, I'm heavily involved with the army cadets, funny enough. <laughs> um, uh, and that takes up a fair bit of my spare time. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, absolutely. I I've got a couple of other hobbies. Um, I enjoy, enjoy traveling, which is pretty grim at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> because we say to people you should go out more often, but actually we're saying the opposite at the moment. Um, oh, that's an email. About cadets, there you go. Um, <laughs> aside from that, I've got an interest in forensic me medicine, would you believe? Um, so so I, I kind of do quite a bit of studying on that. I'm currently doing a, 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 some, some study in, in theology and what's called catechesis, which is about uh, um, Catholic doctrine. So it's just some stuff that I'm doing inside academic stuff. Um, and um, uh, uh, so traveling, cadets, big part of my life. Uh, I'm very lucky with my family. So that takes up a big part, uh, and that's probably it. Great, thank you. Um, do you have a favourite quote? A favourite quote? Um, I've got lots of favourite quotes, actually. There's a, there's a leader called Simon Sinek, and I use him as a fitter on my work email, and he said, leaders eat last, because it kind of me really just encapsulates what we should be doing, which is lead from the front, but, but make sure your people are looked after first. So leaders eat last. There you go. That's a good quote. Short and sweet. Short and sweet, yes. I could give you a long quote, but it would be really boring, like Shakespeare or something, but there you go. So on to our next question then is, um, what is your biggest fear? Oh, the biggest fear? Something I'm afraid of. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't bear the thought of, I mean, I tried caving once and I just didn't enjoy it. So there's kind of like confined spaces. So yeah. I'm not claustrophobic or agoraphobic or anything like that. I just didn't. I just didn't enjoy it. I just found it very scary. Mm -hmm. uh, so every now and then I go to a camp and people say, oh, you should come and do this, Colonel, and join in with this. And some of it I'll quite gladly have a go at. But if someone says to me caving, I'll probably say, I'd really rather not. <laughs> Don't come up here then, because Lieutenant Roberts will get you in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you warn him. <laughs> I might start getting scary. I don't know. <laughs> Um, can you tell us an interesting fact about yourself that we don't already know? It might be a bit weird, but some years ago, well, it probably is a bit weird if you're not in the medical profession. Uh, so some years ago, I worked on the London Air Ambulance and we had a range of skills that paramedics don't normally get to use. Um, so one day I had to do, uh, when you do chest compressions, you do what's called cardiac massage, so you're pressing your heart and it's called closed chest cardiac massage. And open chest is obviously when you open the chest to do it. So I've had my hand inside people's chests, wow. which is a bit weird if you think about it. But we were trying to save a life, I suppose. Wow. That's an amazing fact. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if you have a bucket list, what is one of the things on your list that you haven't already done? Oh, now you sent me this question. Okay. Because for those people out there who are watching this, all three of them, um, or less, you sent me that question. That's a really hard one to answer um, because who knows? I mean, I, I, I'm not a great believer in bucket lists. I think you do what, you, what you're happy to do. I don't think you should go on a list. So I might have a mental list of places that I'd like to go to that I haven't been to yet because as I said, I do like traveling. Yeah. And there are places that I haven't been to which include South America and India. So I'd probably like to go to Argentina and do some tango dancing or something weird. Um, so who knows? <laughs> Um, sir, what is your dream job if you're not already in your dream job? Oh, I'm in the Army Cadets <laughs> dream job. And like I said, I'm in the ambulance service and have been for a long, 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 long time. Um, and I thought I'd try it out for six months. And that was 35 years ago, as I said. So, so I'm probably in the dream job. I think it's a great job to be in. Um, so it's really difficult to say what would my dream job be because I think I'm very lucky mm -hmm. that I found myself in a job that I've always enjoyed being in even after all these years. So there you go. Dream job, Scottish Ambulance Service, paramedic, go for it. Brilliant. As long as you don't mind blood. <laughs> actually, no, blood doesn't faze me. <laughs> actually, we don't see a lot of blood. Most of the stuff that the Ambulance Service deals with is medical, about 95%. So people with chest pain, strokes, shortness of breath, that kind of stuff. The kind of trauma stuff that you see in the program casualty, mm -hmm. it's only about 5% of the work, thankfully. That's interesting to know. I don't know that. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so, so on to our last question for this part is, if you were stranded on a tropical island, what two things would you want with you? Well, bearing in mind that the tropical island would hopefully have something with citrus in it or lemon or <laughs> it would probably be gin. 
<laughs> and tonic. <laughs> Okay, thanks for answering them, sir. We'll move on to some of the questions that our cadets have asked us first. All right, okay. Um, so we've got quite a few. I'll start with one right. from Corporal Loftus, who's from Elgin Detachment, and right. he asked how long it took you to get to the position you're in now as Colonel of Cadets. Well, that's a really good question. Uh, um, I actually uh, uh, joined the cadets as an adult in 1982. Uh, became Colonel Cadets three and a half years ago, so you can work it out yourself. It takes a long time, but that's not because you need to be special and important or anything. It's because the job itself needs someone who understands the Army Cadets really well. So I've been a detachment commander, a company commander, a deputy commandant, a commandant. I've been a training officer. I've been a PR officer. There's a whole range of stuff that I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you're going to advise the Army, which obviously trains people for, for a defence, uh, um, rather than, than leading a youth organisation, when you're going to advise them, you need to know what you're talking about. Um, so it just takes a long time to get to these positions. And they don't come up that often. Mm -hmm. So there's only one Colonel Cadet's job in Scotland. There are 10 across the UK. Uh, um, and they only come up every three or five years. Okay. Good question. That is a good question. So our next question is from Lance Corporal Leah Sutherland. And she has asked, what was your favourite moment in Cadets? Favourite moment in Cadets? Um, it's difficult because you have favourite moments, don't you? Uh, um, so for me, seeing cadets develop is is, is as joyous uh, now as it was when I was a young adult many moons ago. So seeing a cadet go, you know, perhaps not wanting to abseil, perhaps not being able to shoot, uh, perhaps not being very confident, uh, and then finishing as a cadet with a confidence able to sometimes up in front of people and just just all those skills that they get uh, take with them mm -hmm. the rest of their lives so that probably doesn't answer your question but partly answers it that's great and um, lance corporal maya has asked what are the hardest and easiest parts of your job within the cadets yes yeah okay so probably the hardest part is finding the time because if you're going to do it properly you have to invest the time but we do that in time in, as well as our day job as well as our family. So I think for all adult volunteers, I think it's finding the time to do it is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the easiest part is just uh, um, getting out and about. I don't have a lot of contact with cadets because of the job I'm in. I, I'm in a really weird position where I spend more time talking to uh, people who are in the army than I do to people who are outside of the army, which is weird because I'm an adult volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the stuff I deal with is quite kind of, you know, uh, uh, administrative, it's quite technical, uh, uh, it's quite procedural. Um, so it's quite nice to go on a camp and visit. So don't underestimate how much fun it is for me to go to a camp and see cadets, whether it's one or whoever else, uh, uh, and see them having a good time, because it just reminds me of why, of why we're doing this. Uh, so cool. uh, so there, there was a similar kind of question from Sergeant Max Scott uh, from Elgin. Um, and he was asking, what are the challenges of being the Colonel of Cadets and what are the best parts of your job? Well, Elgin have a lot of good questions today, haven't they? <laughs> um, so I, I, think, um, I think the best part about it is probably just um, seeing how much is going on, how much good work goes on across the country. Mm. And I have to say that, and I'm not just saying it because I'm sitting here as Colonel Cadet Scotland. If you look at what's happening around the rest of the UK, we punch well above our, rate, our, our weight. So what we do is, is really, really good stuff. And it's happening right across wherever you are, whether you're in you know, uh, uh, Shettleston or, 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 um, uh, or, or Orkney, you know, there, there's, there's good stuff going on for our young people and the adults. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a real pleasure. I also do get invited to some nice things. Uh, and it is quite nice to be, uh, you know, sport a bit. You know, so I get every year to go to the beating retreat. I get to go every year to to two in Edinburgh. Uh, I did get, get to go around and visit every single battalion, which is quite unusual. There aren't many people in the cadets who get to see how different each battalion is. Um, so that's a great, a great honour and a privilege, I think. Um, okay, so this is another one from Lance Corporal Maya and Lance Corporal Logue in Stornoway has also asked the same question. Right. They're both asking who and what inspired you to join the Army Cadets? That's a great question. And in fact, it was my detachment commander, a chap called Roy Thorne. Who still, he was still going strong at 82 years of age down in London um, and still telling the same jokes, like I said earlier. Um, and I was at school and there was a, a, a tamo thing that gave uh, messages out which said that there was a, a weekend camp going on. I was in the Scouts at the time and I thought, I really enjoy camping. And when I turned up at the cadet hut and everybody had 
combat song and they were carrying rifles. I thought that's a bit weird. Uh, um, but that's how I joined. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I left the Scouts. Not that I didn't enjoy the Scouts. I thought the Scouts was great and I learned a great deal from it. Uh, but I really enjoyed the cadets. Um, and that's why I joined. And my best mate, who I'm still talking to <laughs> all these years later, um, he and I joined at the same time. So there you are, friends for life. 19, was it 1982 you joined? Sorry. An adult I joined in 82. I joined as a cadet in uh, December 77. Wow. W which makes me very <laughs> experienced, a veteran, not an old. Can I say far? Is that allowed? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not an old, I'm a veteran because it sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. um, what's the next question? Uh, next one is from a, a CFAV. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's from Lieutenant Nicholson, and he's asked, can we get more logistical support to enable us to use pyro? Oh, well, that sounds like a local issue. It depends. Where, where are they based? So, Stuart is in Ross Company. Yes. Right. So, so w w which detachment do you know? Or? So that'd be Tain, I believe. Tain, okay. So, yeah. Tain is, is obviously one of the rural locations. Uh, the difficulty with, with, with pyro is as an explosive. So the rules around it are really, really tight. Um, mm -hmm. And the rules around moving it uh, and using it are even tighter. Uh, um, so so it's, it's getting hold of it. There's not a lot of it because that's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Big hangers and things. Um, uh, what I would say, if there's, a, if there's an opportunity, it's normally annual camp because that's when, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's mass movement of weapons and ammunition and stuff and it's easy to get you know, the training done on the side. You used to have to go down to Frimley to do everything, but you can do it locally now for things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever else you might be able to get your hand on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, you know, just, just keep asking the question uh, and, and keep an eye out for when they're, when they're being used. But they're quite rare just because of the cost and, and the difficulty yeah. moving them. Thanks for answering that, sir. Um, I've got another question from Lieutenant Nicholson, and he's asking if we can put more training in place for training in built-up areas across brigade with support from CTT. Uh, the answer is perhaps, um, because uh, um, Tivy or something we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of went off the, 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 the stuff we could do a few years ago, and then a sensible head said, well, well, why not? We used to do it before. It's great fun. The kids, cadets enjoy it. It's like all our training. We don't do it because we're training for war. It's just... It's just just to challenge and excite. Um, in terms of the training, training team, I think there's obviously they've got the capacity as well. So the training team don't just look after adults in the ACF, they look after all the CCFs uh, um, and actually attend training days at the schools. Uh, um, and that's because of just the way the CCF is set up. Um, uh, so they're awfully busy people, actually. Uh, um, uh, but, you know, Major Harvey, he, he's Mr. Mr. Get It Done If He Can. Um, so ask the question. Uh, he's got lots and lots of people in the training team that work with him who are ex-regular soldiers. In fact, I think probably all of them are ex-regular. And quite a number of them are, are, are from an infantry background. Uh, quite a number of them have, have done, you know, they, they, they've school of infantry and all that kind of stuff. So they're absolutely experts. So there's no reason why not. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, where are we on to our next questions? Uh, the next one is from Colonel Sergeant Graham Wells in Elgin. So he's Elgin Detachment Commander. Right. Um, and he's asking, will there be any more ACFA Scotland-led battlefield tours in the future? Oh, yes. In fact, we were supposed to be having one this year. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, with the coronavirus pandemic, we've had to cancel it. Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, mm -hmm. um, we've tried to align them to things like the 75th anniversary of the end of the war and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but we've moved this one back to next year. Um, so we'll do one next year. The other thing is they cost a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so ACFA Scotland is, it, it, you know, has some money, but not an awful lot. Uh, but I, I'm one of the, um, I, I sit on the finance committee, uh, um, which is one of the more boring things I do. But it, it, it's great, actually, because we get to decide where the money goes. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we always support is the battlefield tours. Because the great thing about being a cadet is that you can do these things really, really cheaply. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go on a battlefield tour with your school, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of pounds where we say to cadets it's 50 quid or nothing at all so it makes it accessible which is great so the answer is yes okay and um, just on the subject of coronavirus um our battalions rsmi 
Um, McLeod has asked, how do you foresee the restart of cadets back at detachments? Will we have to implement social distancing measures which will limit the amount of cadets or will we be waiting until all social distancing measures have been removed? Are well, you able to answer that? That's three questions, not one. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's actually a cracking question, Mark said, because um, we've, got, we've got to restart. We're a, we're a hands-on training organisation and we're not hands-on at the moment. Uh, um, so there's already been quite a lot of discussion from Regional Command Cadets Branch, which is, that's another email. <laughs> of cadets. Um, so Regional Command Cadets Branch, for those who don't know, that's the Army's bit that looks after the Army Cadet Force. That's where all the money comes from and the policy and direction about what we do. Hugely supportive. So when you see a new rifle coming, it's Regional Command Cadets Branch, let's pay for it. Uh, and we've been talking quite a lot about how do we restart. So at the moment, nothing past the end of May for training in the UK and past the end of June for training abroad has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. My gut feeling is we're not going to see annual camps. That's just my instinct. Annual camps aren't going to happen. So, so what does that mean? It means then that we have to push everything to the right or, or, or cancel until next year. And I think what we need to do is the, the discussions that are taking place with commandants and with regional command and with brigade are what can we do now? So, for example, you can do the online learning of the adult. You can do your red book test. You can do whatever else needs to be, you know, the safeguarding stuff. Do all that. And then at the end of it, when we do restart, you can concentrate on the hand stuff, hands-on stuff that we can't push to the right. So stuff like weapons handling tests, range qualifications, we can't say it doesn't matter if you're a bit rusty. Yeah. We've got to be safe because that's the riskiest stuff that we do. So I suspect when we go back later in the year, we will go back every day that we're in lockdown is a day closer to us going back to the cadets. Um, so when we go back, I think what will happen is a lot of activity will be cancelled. We'll say that competition, we'll run it next year. Uh, that annual camp, we might do something later on in, the, in, the, in October, around the half term, so we can get adults, senior cadets, uh, uh, and cadets through some kind of annual camp light activity. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think, will social distancing have to be in place? I suspect until we find a virus for this thing. Who am I? I'm no expert. But what people are saying is that until we've got some kind of uh, immunity in the population from this, uh, um, it, it's, it's a, an awful virus, dreadful virus. So the answer is probably there's going to be social distancing, but we'll have to be led by the people who, who are the experts. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, so the last question is from Captain Lisa McFarquhar. So she's in Russ Company. She's the trading officer over there. Right, okay. uh, and her question is, will the military skills competition ever be moved away from Barry Budden? Moving it around the country will keep the competition fresh and more exciting. Oh, controversial. <laughs> um, I think it could be run anywhere is the reality. Uh, 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 the, the, the advantage of, of Barry Budden is it's one of the better training areas uh, and we're able to get everybody, both the adults and the cadets, all into one place. Maybe you think there's somewhere that we can do it better than that? By all means, let us know where. Uh, we aren't blessed with a number of huge training areas in Scotland. Mm -hmm. If you look around, uh, so it's all very well saying move it, uh, but you've got to say where, where would we move it to? And I'm really conscious when we do the planning that for people who are up in the Highlands, particularly your part of the territory where people live on the islands, you know, a long, long way to travel to get down to activity, really aware of that. So when we did the trawl for the Polish exchange a few weeks ago, we did it uh, you know, down in Dunkeld from you, up in Dunkeld from me. Uh, just to try and make it as central as possible. But even so, we had cadets from Tain and other places coming down, and it's a long, old day. Um, but the majority of people don't live in one Highlanders, two Highlanders area. The majority of people live in the central belt. So there's a real balance to be had. Um, I'll talk to Major Harvey about that, but uh, um, I suspect it's going to be a case of, uh, uh, you know, where else might we run it? Might, might we run it? Uh, um, in terms of um, making it fresh, you know, the, the, there's a program and a format that works. Uh, again, it's based on military skills. If people think that it could be changed, by all means, throw the views in. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very keen. I, I also do a lot of training down at Frimley. Um, so I help deliver the area commanders, the company commanders courses, and the senior officers courses for newly appointed commandants and deputy commandants. And we get feedback after every course to keep it fresh and change the course as much as possible. So, so feedback is welcomed. Fort George could be in the running for the new military skills competition. <laughs> well, I've never been there. I, I don't know what it's like. So maybe I should go and have a look. A brilliant training area, yeah. sir. All right. Are you biased? Pardon? Are you biased? I am, yes, very much so. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, okay, so that's all the questions from our CFABs and cadets. What we're going to move on to now is a quick fire 40 round. So we'll ask you a question. There are two Thank answers. You. you just have to pick the first answer without even thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so the first question we'll ask you is cat or dog? Dog. Hey, cats. <laughs> hey, them. Sorry. Sorry to all the cat lovers out there. <laughs> Do you prefer a digital watch or an analogue? Analogue, quality. Batman or Superman? Batman or Superman? Superman. Bacon butty or a sausage butty? Bacon. With tomato ketchup. Oh no. Yes, was that the next question? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sat nav or Atlas? Sat nav, so much easier. <laughs> Facebook or Twitter? Twitter. And um, when you're walking, would you rather listen to music or a podcast? Music. Swimming or sunbathing? Swimming. It's Football or rugby? Sorry? Football or rugby? Oh, no, rugby, of course. <laughs> I think we know the answer for this one. Ketchup or HP? It would depends well. Ketchup. Oh. Ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> a bath or shower? Uh, that's a really difficult one. I know you have to quick fire it, but I prefer a bath, but I shower because it's quicker. There you go. <laughs> Good to know. Thanks, sir. <laughs> yeah, too much information. <laughs> so whenever you're changing the toilet paper, do you put it over or under? Over, of course, that's weird. <laughs> that's not the way of doing it. <laughs> We're just checking. We have to make sure that everyone does it the right way, sir. That's the right way. And when you put your cups in the cupboard, do you yep. put them the right side up or upside down? Right side up, absolutely. Uh, next one is mountains or beach day. Say again? Mountains or a beach day? I can't hear what you're saying, sorry. In mountains or a beach day, would you rather be... Oh, beach? mountains or a beach day, probably a beach day, yeah, sorry. It's the accent. <laughs> uh, sweets or crisps? Oh, sweets. That's why I've got rotten teeth. <laughs> <laughs> selfies or group photos? Oh, group photos. Selfies are for weirds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coffee or tea? A good coffee. I like tea. TV or a book? TV. Horror film or wrong rom com? Oh, horror film! Come on. <laughs> uh, city or countryside? I'm a city boy at heart, actually. There you go. Uh, summer or winter? Oh, summer! I hate the winter. It's so long and so dark and so miserable. Do you prefer bread or a roll? Bread. Um, would you rather play a card game or a board game? Uh, a board game, probably. Yeah. Monopoly. Oh, yeah. Operation. Operation, hey! <laughs> fieldcraft or navigation? Oh, fieldcraft. Now, the next question is whiskey or wine, but I'm going to change it and ask whiskey or gin? Well, I do like whiskey. Or do you? I prefer a gin. I'm oh. a gin. Sorry. <laughs> next one is family or friends? Oh, family. Um, Takeaway or delivery? Uh, takeaway. A book or an ebook? Book. Would you rather save money or spend money? Oh, well, you've never met my wife. So I'd spend <laughs> it, but you didn't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> but yes, money's for spending. What the hell? Sour cream or salsa? Sour cream. Yeah, sour cream. Yeah. Uh, sun hat or sunglasses? Sun hat. Polka dots or stripes? I was going to say, because I'm underneath here, I'm bald, and I burn, that's why I have to wear a hat. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear your question. <laughs> Polka dots or stripes? Oh, stripes. Um, McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. Early morning or late night? Early morning. Which Early other weeks, one? Weekends, I get up at half past six. Every late. day? Every day. It's a good routine, sir. Um, sunrise or sunset? Uh, sunrise. Uh, DVD or cinema? Cinema. Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Or Pepsi. Do you prefer to drive or fly? Uh, drive. Um, spa or gym? Spa. 
<laughs> if you had to choose then, so New York City or Vegas? Oh, New York City. New York yeah. City. Have you been there, sir? I've been to both, yeah. Yeah, they're both wow. great cities, but I prefer New York. Yeah. Um, so that's all of our questions that we have to ask you. We like to finish with a wee message from you for our cadets and our CFABs to inspire them during these tough times, if that's okay, sir. Okay. Oh, you want me to say something? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, probably, I'll probably repeat what I said earlier, which is that it's a really hard time. Uh, the number of people who contacted me to say, I'm missing my mates, I'm missing the cadets, I'm missing school. Uh, you know, I'm missing the social contact. And it's not even, you know, I'm able to go to work. In fact, I need to go to work because the job I'm in, and, you know, and it's really hard that you see people you haven't seen for a long time and you can't shake hands. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's a really, really tough time. But it, it's what I would say is it's absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, I'm in the health service. We're going through a really, really tough time. There are some really, really sick people out there. So people keep saying the message is stay at home and save lives. So the NHS, it really does make a difference and it'll help this thing go away. What I was saying is the cadet, Army Cadets started way back in the 1890s. I wasn't there when it started. Um, and it will still be there, please God, in 50 years' time and 100 years' time. So we will get back to cadetting. Um, try and you know, keep in touch with your adults and adults. Try and keep in touch with your cadets. Uh, um, I've seen some really cracking stuff going on, just like this. You know, just an opportunity to do something different that we probably wouldn't have done if we didn't have this lockdown. So do what you need to do uh, um, to stay sane. Uh, do what you have to do to stay safe. Uh, uh, stay safe. And um, I really look forward to the cadet starting back because we're all about delivery of the cadet experience. And, and you know, well done to everybody out there, like yourselves, you know, Mr. Taggart, Ms. Burnside, for for doing this to help keep the cadets and adults engaged. And 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 uh, you know. I, I take my hat off to you. <laughs> you see your sunburnt head if you do that, sir. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I've been in the house painting all day, so. Oh, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sir, thank you very much for coming on today and letting us yeah. ask you some questions. It was nice to see you again. See you. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, see you when I see you. <laughs> we'll see you soon, hopefully. Okay. All right. Yeah, again, Thanks. Sir. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.